a woman. She's maybe in her late twenties, and she's wearing um, like a bonnet on her head, and you look like her hair is kind of like tucked up underneath it. She's got a like a kind of like peasant farmer's uh, dress on, and you see sitting on the uh, like the wagon behind the 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 two in the front. There's another child just kind of sitting on the the back of the thing, kicking his legs out as they're as they're wa- rolling along, and they start to pull up next to you guys. Are you guys gonna do anything? I mean, they look like regular travelers, yeah. Yep, and as a matter of fact, as he's coming by the um, the male in the other wagon, kind of like tips his hat to you guys as you're, as you're going by. Just nod at them if they look like normal things. Mm-hmm. And the, the kid kind of smiles and waves at you while he's kicking his feet. And, Say that again? Sorry, Alistair was talking. Uh, the kid kind of smiles and waves at you as they're going by, and he's like kicking his feet in the air and stuff like that. And uh, they just keep passing by. I think and, I was going to um, um, try and keep pace with him for a minute. Hey, okay. everybody. Uh, anything? Any news down the road? They're coming from the opposite direction, right? Uh, correct, yes. Yeah, um, he's just an asset. And the the male in the front kind of like slows the horse a little bit so you don't have to like trot or anything. He's like, mm, not too much. I mean, we're just getting out of the, the dragon reaches. Seems like things are really head downhill down there. Just so you know, a couple of, couple of miles up ahead, there's a little checkpoint. Just, uh... Make sure that you're ready for it. Have your paperwork uh, handy. Because they're going to be silver. Checking, checking wagons. Oh, is it uh, the, the dragon people? <laughs> is it their checking? Uh, nope. Uh, they're they're making sure that we keep those freaking... Those filthy dragon can out of the... Out of the silver cannon's territory. So oh, okay. they're just making sure no one's up to no good. Thank you. Travel safe. And... Uh, Ares isn't that's awesome with silver. Okay. All right. He catches it, and he, he, like, looks at you, gives you a wink, says, thank you kindly, and continues on down the road. And, um, I need, uh, so they head down the road, and they're, like, kind of fading off into the distance. The and kid, I need... Did the kid move at all? Uh, nope. He was just sitting on there the whole time that you guys were t- talking. Okay. Um, but then I need, uh, you to roll a perception check with your pet. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, I was going through his eyes. Well, they came up, I don't know. Would you have jumped out? No, no, because what I was thinking was that I would, even if someone was talking to me, because the pet is so near, I could still talk through and, you know, see. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and it I would have continued. look like you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, perception check, advantage with... Hearing or sight. So, can I delete that weasel off the map, Josh? I can't delete it myself. Uh, I do. Where's perception? Yes. There we go. So twenty. Okay. Three sixty head. So as the the bird kind of looks back at them, kind of okay. traveling out into the distance, you see that the little boy has stood up and is uh sitting on the back of the um, the wagon, where you can see behind you, and he's just sitting there cross-legged, and the smile on his face is totally gone, and he's just staring straight at the um, at the the box in the wagon behind you. Like, intently just fucking staring, not moving a muscle, and his face is like just leaned forward, like staring at the box as they fade into the distance. That little boy was creepy. I mean, and I, I can't see this because I'm driving. I'm yeah. Correct. Here. Correct. Um, How so? Well, as we, uh, as they were descending off into the distance, he was just staring at us. His smile gone. <clears throat> oh, give me a second. And then, uh, uh, fuck. Valentine flies up and you know, flies behind, just to see if anything was, like, weird about the back of the box where the kid was staring. Okay. Um, so he just, he's not gonna follow the kid, he's just gonna look at the back of the box? Yeah. 
Okay, yep, the back of the box looks exactly the same as it did before. Um, padlocks are good and locked up, and the slit is closed as well. Okay, yeah, it flies back to perch where it was. Well, I doubt that bodes well for us. Or it's just, you know, kids being weird. I was a weird kid. Okay, uh, so as you guys are, are trundling along, it takes about another maybe like 45 minutes um, to go the next couple of miles because you guys aren't, you know, going very fast. And you see in the distance as there's a line of maybe like three carts and there is what appears to be like a, like a, what's that? When you, uh, you take like sticks and weave them together. Uh, Weaving? I, I guess, but it's like a building. Uh, like a... Like a little hut? hut? I, no, I'm like trying dogs. to think. <laughs> Lean nice. two. It looks like a basket, but it's a, the size of a building. But anyways, uh, it, there's like a guard post kind of made out of uh, stick and wheat, like posts uh, in the middle of the, the road. And there are two uh, what appear like guards... One of them is wearing, like, a full, like, steel breastplate. He's got a steel helm on, and he's carrying a, uh, a halberd. And the other one uh, is wearing, like, a leather jerkin, and he's carrying a heavy crossbow in his arms, or in his hands. And as the wagons pull up, the one with the halberd says, holds up his hand. He's like, oh, stop there. Let me see your papers. And uh, you guys kind of start to head up behind the uh, the third cart. And as you get there, uh, uh, Iris, uh, um, Bilko kind of says, Psst, hey, you, come here. Iris and I'll scoot over. Yes. He yes. says, listen, just let me do the talking. I have the paperwork. It's all in order. All right? Just stay cool. There's nothing out of the order in there. This shouldn't be a problem, okay? Just a walk in the park. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, walk in the forest. <laughs> He's telling nope. this to the youngest mm -hmm. looking one. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, e either either way. All right, just stay cool. You're just guards. And uh, as you, he's having this conversation, the, the first wagon hands him uh, like a sheet of parchment, and he looks it over, kind of looks in the wagon, uh, and the first wagon has, like, hay in the back of it, and, like, um, there's these cages of chickens, and, uh, like, rabbits, and, um, like, geese and stuff like that, and it appears to be, like, farm livestock that he's, he's taking towards the, the same direction you guys are going. The one behind him is filled with, uh, like, more boxes that look a lot like, um, the Structure material boxes that you have in your wagon. Yeah, hard. Okay. Shh. And then behind that one is uh, oh, a wagon with like goats and uh, and sheep kind of in cages in the back of the wagon. And uh, as the guy kind of looks in the cages, he takes his his halberd and kind of like pokes it into the hay, and uh, says, "Looks like everything's uh, okay." Come on through. And he waves that one through and starts talking to the uh, the people in the second line. Are you guys going to do anything? Sorry, Alistair has an injury on his finger. We're trying to figure that out. Okay. Do you guys want to take a little break? Uh, it's like a splinter, but oh. he's, it's disrupted. <laughs> For sure. Do you need me to get it, Alistair? You got it? He's getting the tweezers. Tweezers are very important for this situation. Well, I'm glad you found it. Good job. <sighs> yeah, give us a second. Okay. I'd rather be present for it. <laughs> What's going on? For sure. <sighs> Okay, 
Was it like little spiky thorns? Yeah. Well, I hate those like, things. Yeah, probably the dog brought it in. <sighs> Robot Steven vacuum too. <laughs> God, the fans in the way. Nope. Alistair, can you turn the fan towards Daddy? All right, crisis averted, guys. <laughs> okay, that's better. Thank you, baby. All right. Splinter handled. Okay, so I last thing I heard was him trying to tell Iris that everything's gonna be cool. No, oh, okay. Um, so the the lead did you dis did you hear me describe what was in the wagons? No. Oh, uh, boo. Okay. No, oh, like so, construction materials, right? Basically, the front one has like hay with. Some chicken and geese and stuff like that. The second one has construction materials, and then the third one has like sheep and goats and stuff like that in it. In ours? No, the oh. three wagons in front of your guys. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Some animals, construction material. Gotcha. Yeah. And so as um, you finish having this conversation, he waves the first wagon through and starts talking to the second wagon. Are you guys going to do anything special? Nope. Ours is probably just getting over towards Hayden and Isla, or whenever she gets a chance to pass over by them. If they ask anything, just defer to Dorbin. Um, should we even be worried about having anything? Uh, shrugs. Refer to Dorbin. I mean, would we naturally be like, uh, we should hide this obvious thing? <laughs> um, so... The stuff inside your wagon appears to just be, like, boxes, crates. You looked in the one, it's just got, like, nails and uh, things like that in it. So as far as you know, everything's absolutely fine. You do know that there was that magic thing in the bottom of one of the crates. Mm -hmm. And there is a wagon with a large box with padlocks on it behind you. Um, but that's kind of all you know. Okay. Uh, and he said, I have... Well, it's up to I Iris to tell you what he said, but as far as you know, everything should be fine. Okay, so to defer to, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bilko, right? Correct. I didn't write down the right name. I keep calling him Dorbin. I was like, who is Dorbin? I was like, who's Dorbin? <laughs> who is who Dorbin? Is Dorbin? <laughs> I feel like there was a Dorbin, though. That sounds familiar. I do, too. I think there was a Dorbin at some point, but... Maybe it was a drunk guy from the last one. Uh, that might have been it. The drunk dude from the inn? I'm not sure. But um, anyway, so while you guys are just sitting there, they wave. They talk to the second person. He uh, kind of like looks inside one of the boxes and waves them through. And then uh, the guy with the goats hands him a, a piece of parchment and he takes a look at it. And <clears throat> you guys notice this whole time uh, what happens is the guy with the halberd steps up, challenges the, the driver. Um, the driver hands him paperwork, and uh, he kind of like looks through the, the cargo and waves them through if everything seems to be in order. But the entire time, the guy with the crossbow is standing back, and he has the crossbow trained on the driver of the wagon whenever he's kind of looking through them. <clears throat> and finally, the... The guy with the halberd waves the the um, wagon in front of you guys through, and you it's your guys' turn as you guys pull up. And as you pull up, he says, Halt there! What do you got? Let me see your paperwork. Oh, uh, Bilko, that's you. Um, who's Bilko? That, that guy. And, and I uh, think he, that Bilko's general direction. <laughs> he kind of looks behind the wagon at the the driver for the back wagon, he's like, are you Bilko? And Bilko's like, yeah, that's me. And he pulls out a sheet of parchment out of his uh, his coat pocket and he says, I got the paperwork right here. And he looks back up at you guys and he says, don't you guys move or my buddy will take you out. Alright? I'll be right back. And he heads back to go talk to Bilko. Um, as he kind of comes up to Bilko, Bilko like leans down and they kind of start uh, talking in low voices. Are you guys going to go out of your way to try to listen to this? Um, just so you 
kind of know the scene. You guys are sitting. Uh, K- uh, Caden and I, Ayla are sitting in the wagon, and Iris, you're standing next to them, correct? Yeah. Okay. And you guys see the crossbow person just watching both of you, and he has the crossbow trained on you, Ayla. Okay. Um, I'm going to just like kind of eyeball him, but in a sort of try to be like intimidating slash. Are you kidding me? Like seriously, you think this is? You think this is scary? Like kind of like a roll your eyes at him type of way. Yeah. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Are they... Where are they whispering at? So, they're back here. Okay. You guys are Would right here. Owl hear it from right here? Uh, does he have advantage on Perception. hearing? Yes. Or, uh, hold on, let me double check. I'm pretty sure... I think it's with sight. Uh, owls have advantage on re- hearing or sight. Okay. And can you hear through his ears? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm right now. I'm currently in embodying his body. I can't hear through my character's ears, but since he's so close to me, um, I'm using. Like, I can still use him as my ears. But if okay. he flew off, I wouldn't be able to hear anything. I could dictate what I'm seeing, but I can't get feedback. Like someone can't be like, "Oh, go check this out." I won't hear it. Okay. So you um, go ahead and roll a perception check with advantage. But they can smack me, and I'll feel that. Okay. Um, now, just no, no. <laughs> um. So one. with with your um, just so I understand what it looks like when you're seeing through your bird's eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, do your eyes close or like turn white or so my eyes are already black? <laughs> so yeah, I forgot. Maybe yeah. they roll up, but no one will know. Okay. Um, but I was just gonna be like, I just stare normally. Um, okay. But. The crux is that I gave the owl a red glowing sigil on its mask that represents me seeing through it. Ah, uh, so the sigil starts to glow? Yeah. Okay. So it's like a glowing red eye symbol. Uh, so I think while you, he, the bird is like trying to listen, um, he doesn't really hear anything. But you see the, um, the crossbow guy kind of narrow his eyes. And like his crossbow, like slowly, kind of creeps up to aim at the at the bird. Um, but he doesn't do anything if you don't do anything. Nope, I don't do anything. Okay, so you hear them talk for a couple of minutes, and then they laugh and says, "Ah, oh, that's a good man." And Bilko kind of claps him on the shoulder and says, "We'll remember this." And they kind of make a. Uh, Actually, I need another perception check from... Uh, is anyone watching them besides uh, Val? I think Iris would be. Okay. I need you to make a perception check at disadvantage because, like, the wagon's in the way, the horse is in the way, so there's, like, a lot of stuff in the way. But uh, you can make your regular perception check with the bird, Aiden. Oops. Okay. Um... No. All right, I'm getting distracted by things that aren't important. Okay, uh, perception. Thirteen. He's having a rough time. So, um, you see, as they kind of like get ready to separate, one of them like holds his hand up to his chest, and it appears like he makes a symbol. And you see, as Bilko makes a very similar hand gesture to his chest as they part, and he says, "All right, you're good to go." Go on through. Thank you. And you guys roll through. Um, And as you guys pass through, you guys get maybe two, three hundred yards away from the checkpoint and kind of around a corner so that they can't see each other. Um, Are you guys going to do anything or just kind of keep head down the road? Um... I think I'll, because I'm sitting next to Ayla, uh, well, it seems like they know each other, or at least are affiliated in some sort of organization. They... Yeah, they really like to think that they're a little sneaky, but I don't think anybody who's watched that exchange thinks that they don't know each other. They're not scratching each other's back in some way. Well, fair enough, but at least what I saw was confirmation. 
They were throwing like gang signs at each other. I don't know if I should be amused or offended that they think that we would fall for something like that, but I don't care. I just want to get this job over with. The spirit? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Iris. Okay. Um, so, if you guys don't um, want to have any conversation, you guys kind of, it goes the second guess, half of the while day. while we're walking then. I don't know how I'll approach this, but once we get to the dragon area, the dragonkin area, we need to be far more cautious. What do you we mean? We can't go picking fights with people or trying to drag anything out. Who picks fights with people? Who's been doing that? Iris is just going to stare <laughs> at Ayla. I mean, to be fair, I do it too. Yeah, you uh, do. This is going to be difficult. I think that'll be our truest test. Ugh. I don't want to be burned on any stake while we're there. So we need to try not to confront people who would do so. Okay. Or who would turn us into people who would do so. Yeah. Please. Mm. I see what you're saying. Just get in and get out. Get the job done. Thank you. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you information from her, but <laughs> got to keep it fresh, you know. Keep you on your toes. Um. So, and as you guys are kind of having this conversation, you're traveling down this road kind of slowly. You see, uh, uh, there's traffic in both directions. Um, it's not like super traveled. It's not like a, a super busy road, but clearly, uh, there is commerce happening along this road. Um, from what you guys know of just kind of like the area. Everyone roll me a history check. Okay. History, history, oh, oh. That makes sense for Ayla. No, well, yes, because she doesn't know this round. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, yeah, Iris sucked the whole trip last time. Well, no, you actually... Oh, she never mind. Caden, you know this area... Um, from kind of your studies and because you traveled through this area on your way to um the what's it called you know what i'm talking about what when you went on your little your little quest the reason that you disappeared for a while the reason that i just my quest my quest load like yes. me leaving to the Feywild. correct you went okay. through the same area the, you basically rode on a ship uh -huh. to that city that uh, you saw in the distance earlier and traveled this route um, down this road and you know that the end of this road meets uh, at what a, used to be a border town like a, oh, or not even a border town because it wasn't a it was not a border then um, it was a kind of like um, so you know how there's like a city that's like a shipping port yeah. and then close by Cities that produce, like, goods that need to be shipped off mm -hmm. form up kind of close to that. This is one of those uh, type of a town, like, cities um, that you guys are heading towards. But from your knowledge of what's happened is the city that you guys are headed towards was the um, uh, location of, like, the first kind of, like, uh, battle of the silver cannons trying to fight back against the um, dragonkin. And so you know that this spot is like a place where one of the larger gates into um, Dragon Reach has been constructed. So you're heading towards a, a border checkpoint to get into um, the Dragon Reach. And you know that it's probably about three days' travel to get there. All right. Well, looks like maybe we're getting pretty close. A few more days. I'm thinking uh, I should probably get rid of some of my components before we are, you know, too close to the border. Can't be discovered doing magic and whatnot. Oh, Reminds me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just like, Ours is gonna... Oh, god. Oh, I say, I just pull out a baggie and I dump out some of my components. <laughs> uh, I mean, you have a ways, like, two, three more days. So, I like, you don't have... Magic. I was just... Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you want... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything like... <laughs> crazy right now <laughs> that it really yeah. requires it, but anything that I would have had anyway, I'm for flavor. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of that shit. Okay, for sure. Um, and, uh, this whole time while you guys are talking, Bill goes back there telling stories of when he was in the military and fighting for the Dragon King, and he claims that he was there the day that, uh, that freaking Cadron killed the Dragon King, even though that would mean he would have to be, like, 280 years old. Well, you know, time's really weird, but insight check. <laughs> for sure. Nice. Oh, uh, Oh yeah, you know that there is he is a human male and he looks to be like in his late forties, early fifties. Like there is no way and just looking at his body, like he may have been in the military because he has like uh some mannerisms, mm -hmm. but this guy was probably like a clerk or like a fucking logistics dude. You don't think he's ever actually seen battle. I lean over to Ayla. I think this guy's a lich or something. I'm pretty sure he's lived beyond his life. Uh, I'm just what? kidding. <sighs> so that's disappointing. So what I assume that he was just full of shit is quite accurate. No, no, no. I was I'm kidding. I'm confused now. I'm gonna give him a droll stare. Okay. <laughs> and as this happens, you see as the the sun starts to kind of like set behind the trees, and you hear Bilko his. All right, that's it. Camping for the day. My ass is killing me. Can't wait to get out of this stupid freaking wagon. Have me a drink. He freaking immediately just wrenches the reins to the side and just pulls off to the side of the road right where you guys are. And in fact, you guys keep going a couple of feet. And you'll have to, like, stop the wagons and turn around to go, go back to where he is. You mean you have some drink left? <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> don't worry, lass, I got plenty to drink. Somehow I'm not surprised. And he says, me neither, and hops off the, the, the wagon and uh, says, hurry up, get that wagon over here. All right, let's get it over there. I'll try to get the horses to slow down and maneuver them. Okay. And make a nice wide circle so they a... can't really go backwards. Good place to camp. Do we know anything about this area? He looks around and he says, Seems good to me. And uh, so as soon as he does that, he starts to unhook the the horses from the wagon. And uh, you're for, able to... Go ahead. For someone who says he has such amazing prowess on the battlefield, I'm surprised that you are just going to take a look around and see, Yeah, looks good enough to me. And he looks up at you, kind of like, with one eye squinted, and he says, That's just how good I am. And then he turns mm -hmm. around and kind of chuckles, and goes back to um, unhooking the horses. Mm. And, uh... Nice. <laughs> do you pull the horses up, kind of like, off the side of the road as well? Me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you guys pull the horses over there, kind of make like a little U-shape. Uh, or a V shape with the the wagons kind of at your back, and he starts to like set up a um, uh, a fire pit, like looking around for rocks. And he's like, "Hey, Frankie, get us some rocks for this fire pit." And uh, he finds a log and he sits down on it and kind of crosses his legs and uh, takes his flask out and just starts starts drinking. Um, and he looks at all you guys and he says. Yep, you guys should uh, set up camp. Looks like the fire should go there. You guys should probably sleep over there by the wagon. And, uh, yeah, just stay away from the box and uh, get yourself a good night's sleep. I'm going to have me a drink and probably turn in early. I want to, like, insight check him. Okay. I'm looking for, like, if he, I don't know, just, I don't even know how, Ayla doesn't even something know what she's looking for, so but something is suspicious. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead and roll it, and I'll, I'll, 
Oh yeah, that's real good. Okay, so ask me like three questions, and I'll give you the how Ayla's read on him is. Um, so the for the stopping bit, does it seem like he knew exactly where to stop? Like it just wasn't, you know, um, like oh, it's spur of the moment or whatever. Like, does it, you know, he seems too comfortable and too he feels too safe. To um, want to be. So, he seems, like, completely at ease, like, not afraid in the least, but you don't, like, just from knowing his personality, you don't know if it's just because he's a fucking, like, uh, the Dumb. type of dude that just doesn't give a shit, or if it's because he knows this area super well. He, like, you, it could very easily be either one. Mm -hmm. Um, and what was the second... You have two more. Um, I'm going to see, like, whenever he's kind of setting up, um, is he... I know he doesn't want us to check the box, but is there anything else that he's trying to hide? Um, so, I think, like, while you guys are kind of, like, setting up camp, I'm going to kind of make this insight check kind of a long time. Like, you're just kind of, like, watching him as you guys set up camp and the stuff he does. Um, he definitely, like... At one point, walks over to the um, the wagon with all that you guys were driving, and you see that that's where he keeps his alcohol. But he definitely is like trying to th keep it on the down low so that you guys don't see where it is. But I see uh, where it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, there's like a um, a box that appears to be just like a regular box, but clearly there's like a little hole in it that freaking has like a like a spigot that he can kind of like pour his alcohol into his, his flask from it. Um, and then anytime somebody goes near the box, like his head, like if you're walking towards the back of the box, his head comes up and he keeps an eye on anyone going kind of in that direction. And a couple of times while you guys are setting up camp, he kind of walks over to the, um, to the box and checks the locks. Okay. I think I'm going to also try, like, the box that he had that's keeping his alcohol in it. I'm going to get some, like, gook from my pocket, you know, just, like, pocket gunk and, like, you know, spit and some charcoal from the fire that we've been building up, you know, because you said we're, this is as we're getting ready. Yeah. Right? And I'm just going to, like, stick it in the spigot. Okay. <laughs> where he's getting it, like, the hole for where he's getting the alcohol. Just okay. gook it up. Go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, let's see. Don't don't worry about Holy that. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he doesn't notice you any, at all. He had disadvantage on it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of these times, like, while you're doing something, like, let's you're setting up your bedroll or something, and all of a sudden you hear, What the hell? Who the, how did this? And he's, like, looking around, and he's like, I know one of them. How did this happen? And he, you see him fucking pulling it out, like, Oh, that's this. That's disgusting. <laughs> and he like wipes his hand on his on his uh, his pants, and there's like a big black smear down the side of his pants now. And he's like, "Who would do that to somebody's alcohol? That is just that I can't believe it." But he finally just cleans it out, and like he pours some in his flask, and he takes a sip, and he's like, "Oh!" <laughs> and he spits it out. He's like, "God damn it! God damn it!" And he's like, "Which one of you guys did it?" It was frickin' it was you, Ralphie. I'll never forgive you for this. I'll and he goes back to doing whatever he was doing. Well, if creatures weren't aware of our presence, they probably are now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just using my uh my rapier to like draw different um like arcane symbols in the dirt. And I'm kinda like mumbling to myself. Whenever it gets I'm not supposed to be doing that. I mean, we're not close yet, and I'm trying to decide on, you know, 
I'm going to approach the next couple days with spells for tomorrow. If I should be worried about anything attacking us, how to handle it, or if we should be using magic to hide, or, you know, dealing with what's in the box. So, um, it's about, like, the sun is, like, almost all the way set now, and you maybe have, like, 30 minutes, um, or maybe an hour before it gets, it becomes fully dark, and, uh... Dinner has been, like, kind of cooked. Uh, I think he he prepares just kind of, like, some, like, trail grits. It's basically just kind of, like, corn and, like, meal kind of slopped together. And he says, you're welcome to it if you want some. And he keeps, like, looking at the sky and then uh, kind of, like, glances at the, um, at the box. And he says, yeah, we should... Uh, we should be turning in pretty soon, y'all. So, uh, eat your fill and let's get that fire out and let's get to bed. Got an early morning tomorrow. All right, should we talk about who's going to do first watch and second watch and, you know, third watch? Uh, don't you worry about that. Uh, Frankie's got watches. He can sleep during the day while we're, while we're traveling. Um, well, typically, especially in a situation where we're not surrounded by a by a, the comforts of an inn we don't want one person just sitting out for watch because they might get exhausted and how terrible would that be if he closes his eyes for one moment and actually three hours pass by and then now we are to our knees and some knolls and i don't ralphie kind of walks up to you and his eyes are all wide and he's like oh don't you worry about that I, i'm real good at watching yeah that um, well, it couldn't hurt to have more people on watch, so just in case you need some extra help, we should set up a watch anyway. Um, and I look at the other guys, yeah. like giving them the look. I mean, I'm, I'm on board with that. All right, All right. Suit, suit yourself. If you don't want to go to sleep, that's uh, that's on you. But um, um, but you do know what the idea of a watch is, right? Yeah, we're going to get some sleep. We're going to regain all of our, all of our sleepy points. <laughs> we're just, we're just staying up just long enough to make sure we're safe, so nobody's missing out on any sleep. You're acting very peculiar. What a very odd bunch of, fun couple of dudes not, not wanting to take precautions when you're traveling on the road. Oh, oh, we we set up a watch. That's why I bring Ralphie with us. He's real good at that. Remember that time, last time we were on the road? I don't care what the story is. I'm going to take first watch with Ralph, Ralphie, <laughs> and then maybe, Kaden, you can come after, and Iris, Kaden will wake you up for third. Yeah, let's get to me. All right. I mean, yeah. You're welcome for the extra help. And, uh, Ralphie kind of looks at you with his, uh, his mouth kind of like a gape, and his teeth are sticking out, and he's like, I I don't know. I kind of that's when I do my private things, but uh, that's fine. Um, if you want to stay up and keep watch with us, I guess I guess you could do that. But uh, but is that okay, boss? And uh, Bilko's like, whatever they gotta do, just keep them away from the box. I'm turning in, and uh, he actually walks kind of out uh away from the um. Campfire a little bit, leans his uh, back up against a rock, and uh, kind of like he leans back, kind of sitting up where he could like, as soon as he opens his eyes, he can see the the wagons, and he like kind of tips his hat down over his eyes, and crosses his his uh, one of his boots up onto the toe of the other one, and pulls up a little blanket under his chin, takes a big swig of whiskey, and he says, "All right, good night." Good night. And just as uh, you start to hear him start to snore, um, are the rest of you guys staying up, or are you guys going to try to bed down too? Like, it's really not that late. It's like maybe like 7, 8 o'clock at night. Um, I'm going to... Uh, what's his name, Ralphie? Yes. I imagined him with cock eyes. I just, like... I think oh, for sure. In like, in, in like an over, uh, 
an overbite. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. to do that. That is an absolutely perfect picture. That's very close to what he looks like. Good, 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 good. Yeah. I'm doing the Lord's work. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'll kind of go up to Ralphie. Uh, at the same time, I kind of like nod at Eliwick or Ella, Ayla, Ayla. Um, wrong game, wrong yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ralphie, you make these kind of trips often. Oh, yeah, me and, me and Vilko have been doing this for a while. You guys uh, have been on this road before? Oh, yeah, a couple times, a couple times. Ran into any uh, mishaps on the way? Yeah. You know, bandits, gnolls, like Kayla said. I don't know if they're from these parts, but... Uh, no, this this road pretty safe. Every time the guard patrols sometimes, but they keep the bandits handled. So only thing you really got to worry about is wild animals, and that's what we keep the crossbow for. And he points over at the um, his wagon, and there's like a crossbow kind of like uh, bracket, like what's the word? Strapped to the to the side of the wagon. Well, that's good. Yeah, uh, and no worries about dragonkin coming up in the night. Nope, nope, not that I know of, but you know. Stranger things have happened, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm pretty good at keeping watch. Yeah, I bet you are. Yeah, it's it's kind of my thing. It's what I do. It's how I, it's how I uh, earn my pay. Does anything ever peculiar happen with your traveling partner over there? Oh, all kinds of things, but you know, uh, I don't ask questions. That's why I get the big bucks. But surely you've noticed. If he can consistently goes to to bed super early, if anything's weird, just about that fact. Um, go ahead and make a perception check or an okay. insight check. Insight check. Insight check. <laughs> um, so when you say that, you see him kind of like look down and look over at him, and then like look at the at the box and say. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you guys probably should turn in early. I've always found when traveling with, with Bilko, it's best for uh, everyone to go to bed early. Not always a good what? idea to stay up late. What happens if we stay up late? Oh, nothing. Nothing. You do Usually. You, you do understand why this sounds a little bit weird, right? Well, I do. Um... But, you know, it's always kind of weird traveling with Bilko. We get the, See, the weird contract, but don't I, you I'm worry not, about it. I'll keep watch. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to discover your secrets or his secrets just because um, I'm trying to make sure that his secrets aren't going to hurt me. I have well, places to be, and this is just a step on the way. Well, uh, ain't got hurting yet, so uh, I'm pretty sure you guys, y'all be pretty fine. But... I'm gonna look at up, look at him up and down, like and when he says he ain't gotten hurt yet, and I'm like, you know, because I'm a, the way I'm picturing him all. Oh know. yeah, he's super <laughs> gangly and freaking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and he just looks it right back at you and says, "Yep, not yet." Hmm. Well, by any means, you'll still have some company on your watches tonight. And he kind of like looks down and says. Yeah, I always like the company of a of a pretty girl like you. That'll that'll be all right, I think. And then he gets all shiny. He's like, "But I'm I'm sorry." I I, no, no, no. Like before he even says any, like before he does, like I shouldn't have said that. I'm just going to give him a blank stare and I'm going to turn around, and like in the middle of his sentence, I'm walking. <laughs> For sure, and he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's okay." And he kind of like puts his head down and turns around, and um, he kind of uh. Takes a there's like a box that's like kind of just off to the side of the the uh, wagon a little bit, where he can keep watch on the back of the wagon, and he can keep watch on uh, your guys' wagon, and he just kind of sits there and like imagine like a little boy when they sit on the uh, like on a box, and like they put their hands by their side and they're just like swinging their legs back and forth, mm -hmm. kind of rocking back and forth, and that's what he looks like on the box. <laughs> I say we stay up. <laughs> yeah. My, okay. I think my curiosity has been piqued. And just as you say that, well, I guess we should stay up. My curiosity has been piqued. 
the sun dips behind the horizon and uh it suddenly becomes like not like you know how when the sun sets all the way there's that kind of just like shade of darkness that that pops up when the the sun's no longer giving any light mm-hmm. kind of looks like that looks like that okay and um uh iris just as that happens um the presence inside your head that is the vampire suddenly becomes like you have this this feeling of like a heightened awareness and a sense of fear but that's all you get like she doesn't say anything she doesn't do anything you just have this where she becomes super aware like like almost like she was asleep and now she's suddenly awake and you get this feeling that she's very uncomfortable. This is going to. It has first. Yeah. Well, I guess y'all are all nearby, anyways. Keep a sharp eye out tonight. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. I've definitely and... been nervous since this guy hasn't. He just wanted to stop out of nowhere. Ours is going to. Nah. Can you tell? I don't remember if you could telepathically communicate with your familiar. Do you remember, Adam? If they're within a hundred feet, unless you have a different rule. Nope. Uh, I was going to give Crackles uh, instructions to make a wide sweeps and go peck whoever is on watch uh, okay. of our team if something happens. Okay. Um. I do okay. Plan on staying awake. I don't plan on going to sleep yet. Um, I did want to, you know, kind of talk to you guys a little more in general. And, uh, you know, we can keep an eye out at the same time. All right. Okay. But I need to go do something real quick. No, I'll okay. only be like 10 minutes. No, 10 minutes. <sighs> Fine. I wanted to talk to you particularly. Let's go on. Ours is going to go out into the forest ish. Well, I don't know where we are. Are we in a forest? Yes, it's a big... Remember the forest I was telling you? These big, huge redwood trees um, where, like, they're not super close together, but, like, you still can't see out into the woods. Like, if you go walking into the woods, they'll be able to see you for a while, but if you go very far, just suddenly it's just like a... a, a like a mask of, of tree trunks, so you can't actually see where somebody is. Like, your depth perception is kind of messed up. Like, it's almost kind of an eerie feeling looking out into the woods. Ours isn't going very far. Maybe, like, 40-ish feet. Okay, yeah, they can... We'll be able to see you the whole way. She's just gonna duck behind a tree and um, cast a few spells. Okay. First of um, which is gonna be false life, followed by mage armor. <laughs> then um, she's going to ritual cast the text magic. And whatever people are doing for the 10 minutes that takes. I'm also kind of going to take the opportunity. Hold on, wait. Let me, because you just reminded me that I have Shield of Faith. I need to know how long that lasts. Okay. Um, and uh, I guess, well, she's reading that. Up to 10 minutes. All right. Okay. Yeah, are you ever... She's kind of an interesting one, Iris is. Hmm. You know, Skeleton yeah. Squirrel the way she casts her spells is different <laughs> and particularly you know making a joke about a lich it seemed like she was genuinely enthusiastic about it if it was a lich well I don't really care what she is or how she casts her spells just as long as it doesn't get in my way fair enough yeah well it could get in your way that's why we should probably talk about it. Okay, what do you think is concerning? I don't know. Just want to make sure that she, you know, she has a vampire brain right now. Or, I guess, I don't know, what do I know? Oh. I know that she had the vampire sword, or dagger. Yes, all you know is that she took possession of the da- vampire dagger. That, that you, yeah, yeah, that's okay. true. She has the, you know, the vampire dagger. That's and true. And she seems to be a little more interested in the... Know, darker side of things, but not that that's a bad thing. You know, 
I knew someone back in the day that dabbled in it himself, and he wasn't uh, generally a bad guy. So, how about we keep a wary eye, but not expect... Or, let's not treat her like a criminal until she is. No, no, I wasn't saying that. I just want to know more. Oh. It's just, you know, better to yeah. know more and feel comforted in what we find out. Or more concerned, but, you know, we won't know until we ask. I do understand what you're saying. Did you want to ask her? Well, yeah, that was the plan. Okay. Um, I think as they kind of finish this conversation, your detect magic spell um, executes uh, Iris, and I want you to um, roll an Arcana check. Ooh. Okay. Um, so you see as you cast that, let me... Protect magic. Sense presence magic within 30 feet. Um, so around you directly, there's nothing, but are you going to walk back to the wagons once you've cast it? Yep. Okay, so as you get closer to um, the wagons, you definitely see, like, through the cracks of two of the um, uh, of the crates, kind of like a, like a faint glow kind of shining through the cracks of the... Um, of the of the containers on the back of this wagon. Uh, you may be muted. I'm not sure. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, is yeah. she able to tell what kind of magic it is? Um, divination magic. Divination. Interesting. All right. And towards the nothing crazy going on with the one back here. Um, so not from here, um, but like, what was your roll again? You got a nat one. Never mind. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing coming from that. Now I was gonna go back and sit down with the others. Okay. Well, you're right about those chests mm. next to us. Caden. Oh, uh, what did you discover? Uh, not much. Just a little bit of divination going on. Divination. Maybe just track it? That's, uh, interesting. I oh, can't even imagine. At least uh, it wasn't, uh, the one for damage. <laughs> I forget. Uh, what's the Dedication, one? Dedication, probably. Fuck. Uh, I know what you, I can't, um, evocation. what is that? Evocation, yes. Uh, I think evocation would have been more concerning, but this is kind of strange. I guess it could be concerning <sighs> in its own way. Um, I don't know what we can do about it, I guess this is a little easier to leave to the imagination and just move on, you know? Agreed. That box, on the other hand. Hmm. Are you guys wanting to try to look inside the box or just leave it be? At this point, I'd rather leave it be. That is tempting, but... <clears throat> I don't think it's slaves and so I'm not prone to investigate as much as I am curious. Same. I just want, like I've said before, I just want to get over with. Yeah. We don't need... If there's going to be another dagger in that box that's going to possess another one of our minds, I don't want anything to do with it. Well, yeah. Ignorance is bliss in this case. Nice segue. So about that dagger. How's it treating you? Ours is going to fish out our fish for the dagger to look at it in our bag. Not too bad. Okay. Nothing I and do, not used to. As soon as you actually like touch the dagger and are holding it in your hand, that feeling that you get that you got earlier, like becomes much stronger, and you can like imagine if like uh, there was somebody in your head 
and like you could feel them like turn and look at something. And as soon as the dagger's like in your your hand, it almost feels like the presence inside your head turns and is staring at the cart. Uh, this cart. I was gonna glance towards the cart. And roll another Arcana check now that you're looking directly at it. So, as you kind of look, and you didn't notice this before, but like, so, when, when you cast uh, Detect Magic, like, since the, the planes have been kind of like cut off from each other, there's been this kind of a, like an ambient magic in the world. Like, when you cast Detect Magic, you can kind of see it. Imagine it kind of like, um, like... Like, you know, if you've ever seen, like, how they, like, uh, portray pollen in, like, a, a, a show when they're just trying to give it some kind of a, a substance so that as a, a viewer you can tell that pollen is being, uh, like... Like just a little poof. Correct. And it's, like, that fine of a, of a feeling, but it's all the way around you. And as you're looking at the cart, it appears like that, like, magical essence is being pushed away from it. How strange. So and the it's, magical... No, it's, that's for him, sorry. Yeah, and it's it's very faint. Like, the only way that you noticed it is just because you were looking directly at it. And it's like... Imagine it, like, a millimeter away from the um, the edge of the wood... And then it just gets pushed away like a millimeter. And then it tries to fill the gap. It gets pushed away again. And that's what it looks like uh, around the entirety of that cart. Hmm. Uh, I was going to glance at... Who's the other person on watch? Well, right now, oh, we're all just awake. Correct. Uh, the person who's not a part of our group. Oh, Ralphie. Oh, Ralphie. As he just distracts him doing his own thing and taking his he, sleep. At the po this point he's got like a like a shaving knife and he's like picking his fingernails and then like you see him like start nibbling on it and it totally looks like a rat chewing on a freaking seed or something. And he's just like and goes back to and he spits something out and goes back to cleaning his nails with his knife. Um, go back to the original conversation. Uh, go ahead, Miranda. Oh, I was just going to um, say that I'm going to make a comment, but then I'm going to pull out my notebook and like write in it. But pretty much, um, I'm going to say, is this, is he actually a, a man or is this a different type? Like almost to myself, or is this a new type of creature I haven't seen before? And then so that's when I take out my notebook and start making the notes, drawing a picture. I was going to laugh at that. Um, it's, so far, it's not too bad. The vampire, it gives me a little, well, at least I'm not lonely. Yeah, I did see something pass in front of your eyes when you grabbed the dagger. Like, something when you glanced at the box. Okay, um, I think Maladra is afraid of it, and looking at the box, I think it's rejecting magic. It might be covered in an anti-magic field, perhaps, hmm. or something else that I don't understand. Well, it could be useful. I could imagine why... Are we delivering this to the dragon place? You're delivering it to the orders that you were given is that you were to escort these people to Winthrop, which is that town that I was telling you about, mm -hmm. and that is the, the wall. Like, the wall is being built right there. So you're at least passing it into that territory. Well, if it's rejecting magic, I mean, if it's over by those dragon kin, it kind of makes sense if they hate magic. To have something that rejects it. 
I mean, I'm not liking it, but if it stays away from us, then I guess we might have care. Um, That's true. Or it's it holding is... some... Go ahead. I was going to ask Josh, is um, this... Have I heard of anything about repelling magic? You know, my many travels at all, like anything. Because, you know, I've been trying to look through, look for devices that can help me time travel, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe, I mean, I'm sure I've come across, like, plans for other types of interesting devices. Roll a, um, roll an Arcana check. Okay. Oh, man. Um, nope, nothing specific that deals with that. Um, I mean, yes, that you've, you've read that that is a thing that happens in the world, but you're not, ex like, you don't know enough to, to spout any details or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. The alternative is that there's something in the magic field barrier that concerns a God knows how many years old vampire. No offense, Manadra. I mean, could be in our benefit, then. Do you think that there's something else in the box with the magic suppressor? That's what he Drugs. just said. I know, that's oh. I was confirming. Because, like, I was restating. I can't tell. I mean, you can always peek, but... I dare you. You go. <laughs> nose goes. Put my finger on my nose. I put your finger on her nose. Okay, <laughs> guys. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> if someone's gonna peek, yeah, it should probably be me, but we would need a distraction. That's a joke. We should not mess with... We shouldn't do that. Okay. I'd rather get this over with and not yeah, know more yeah. about... I get caught up. Okay. If somebody I suggests it, will probably do it. That's the problem. <laughs> I mean, as long as it's not hurting us, you know, so... The second that it does, like I said before, the second that whatever's in that box comes out of the box and tries to hurt any of us, that's when I'm not caring what the rules are. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I mean, tempting as it is. Yeah, I should leave it alone. Unless it becomes an issue. I feel more concerned about Bilko, but... I mean, Ralphie's been fine all these times, so hopefully we are, we will be too with this man. Maybe his mystery is harmless. But I'm still curious. At least we could stay up and find out about that. <laughs> Alright. Uh, um, so are you guys going to keep, like, uh, does people go to bed now? Or, like, uh, are you guys all going to stay up and kind of hang out? Um, like yeah. I said, I'm still going to take the first watch, so... Okay. Um, so I think about an hour passes... And um, all of a sudden, like, you look up and you can see the moon just suddenly start to peek over the trees. And, uh, like, you can see these kind of, like, moon rays kind of, like, filter through the, the canopy uh, towards the, the forest floor. And as soon as that happens, all of a sudden you see uh, uh, Ralphie, he, or Frankie, he was just kind of, like, chilling there, uh like, tossing the knife into the dirt and stuff like that, and picking it up, throwing it back in the dirt. And all of a sudden, he perks up and looks up, sees the moon, and uh, rushes over to the cart. And on the side of the cart is this, uh, like, thing that he swings up, and he pulls a large black tarp out from um, this, like, little spot where it appears to have been hidden in the, in the cart. And he climbs up onto the seat... And you see him kind of like shaking it out and spreading it out over the top of the um, of the the box. Hmm. That's peculiar behavior. I didn't know the box could hit a moon burn. <laughs> He's like, oh no, uh, just when it looks like rain, uh, we gotta keep it covered, and he covers it up. I mean, I understand you don't want to tell us anything, but lying just looks ridiculous. Just don't say anything. You're making yourself a fool. Kind of looks at you and, like, looks kind of, like, shy and embarrassed. And he's, like, he turns around and goes back to work and you hear him grumbling under his breath. 
Mm-hmm. If uh, do you want to hear what he's trying to what yeah, he's saying? Yeah, we'll Okay, hear. roll a. Are you gonna go closer or stay no, where you are? I'll probably okay. just stay where I'm at. Yeah, then roll a perception check. And he's just like, I don't know why pretty ladies are always so mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and finally he gets the thing all cut over it and he's like sorry and he kind of like looks down kind of like sh- shrugs his shoulders up and kind of like climbs down and walks over to his box and kind of sits there kind of like kicks the ground like uh, a chastised child um uh, man oh, fuck <laughs> oh, man <laughs> 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 okay, the, the thing I've been developing too. I Ayla's a bit more gruff than even her 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 her, her, her friends that she's trying to rescue, and she's this reminds her of freaking Vernon, you know, <laughs> being all sad. And whenever I had been rough, so uh-huh. I'm gonna have to go over and talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what's what going on in my head. So I'm gonna do a huff, you know, like a I'm resigned. Yes, I'm going to go talk to this. And as you walk over, he just kind of like, seems like he's kind of shining. He's like, nice, nice night, huh? <sighs> yeah, look, I'm not taking anything against you personally. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be mean. But those that are closest to me have told me sometimes I can just, I could just talk without really thinking about it. And I just want to let you know how I'm feeling about all this. I don't like it when people think that I'm dumb. And when people lie to me, when it seems very blatant that it's, you know, a lie, I feel like they're trying to make a fool out of me. So that's why I get defensive. And he says, yeah, it's okay. I'm used to it. It's fine. People are always telling me how useless I am. It's it's part of being part of this group. But, I mean, look so, at me. Like, I don't. I'm going to stop you right there. Ralphie, if you think that you're useless, then why are you the only one who's awake? Well, of your companion. Um, could he be doing this without you? And he, Or does he need you to be awake? He says, well, that's what I'm good at. He told me that I am the best watchkeeper that he knows, and that's why he keeps me around. And he tells me every morning how proud of me he is. Okay, so that means you're not useless. Even if that your your purpose might be just keeping watch at night, that's useful to him, right? And go ahead and roll a um, persuasion check at advantage. <laughs> oh, yeah. you say this to him, and he looks at you, and like his shoulders kind of come up, and he kind of like sits on the box all proud, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, you're right." Thanks, pretty lady. Yeah, I am good at wa- keeping watch. I am not useless. That man, thanks. And like you can tell, he's he. You really brightened his day. All right. So, Ralphie, just again, I'm not going to pry for your secrets. Just promise me no more lies. Okay, I promise. And he, if, if like, you can't tell me something, just say you can't tell me. And he says, "Okay, Ayla." Deal. And he puts his hand out to, to shake your hand. And I'll grab it. And when he grabs your hand, you see him like give this like shy smile and like pull his hand away and like like he's all shy like, oh, the pretty girl touched me. <laughs> At this point, I'm just going to like stand up, kind of do, I can't, I wish you guys could see me in person, but like do the lift thing where it kind of goes in on itself like... <sighs> <laughs> I, I mean, I wish I could explain it, but, you know, kind of squish my lips together, but not, like, poof them out, like, suck them into my mouth, but, I don't mm-hmm. know, anyway. Um, I know, I can picture Kind of, like, like, tap him on the, the shoulder twice, and then walk back to my, where I was doing watch. And you can tell that he is standing a little bit taller after your conversation. Um, after a couple of, like, maybe another, like, 20 minutes, though... Um, he kind of looks at, um, the sky, and he says, um, (sighs) and he seems very, like, confused, and he says, um, so, 
I'm it, so Ayla, I'm ha, I have to do something and you should not see me do it. So I'm going to do that now and you should look away. I'm trying not to lie to you. Um, and he's looking at the floor the whole time. Oh, is it going to hurt me or my friends? No. All right, I'll look away. Okay, and you Don't see him. Uh, you see, hear him uh, kind of scrounging around with something. Are you going to try to look and actually see what he's doing? Well, I'm hoping that the others are like hearing this, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. I'm on the watch. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm going to, I'm not going to like make it obvious. I'm going to see what I can see or like hear or whatever, maybe from the periphery, you know? Uh -huh. I'm not going to try super duper hard. Yes. What are animals that are floating around? Uh, yours is doing a, a around the the perimeter, right? Yeah. So mine might not, but is I don't think. Um, no, I didn't specify. Mm -hmm. So he's still sitting on the crate, yeah. but tucked in. Yeah. He the yeah. owl just had no. It's a night owl, so he's probably just doing his own thing, like looking around. Yeah. But not. But he like, wouldn't be able to alert. tell you anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um but yeah. So. What no I'm gonna answer. look because we've already resolved that like we're not going to try to be too curious about whatever this is. Just get the do the job done. So like you know I'll if I happen to notice something just by like I'm, I'm turning turning around sort of but like my eyes are gonna yeah. start to the side just in case you know that makes you're sense. not you're not looking but corner of your eyes can you happen to see what's going on? Yeah, like it, I'm curious because <laughs> I'm curious, but like we've resolved to just do the job, you know. Roll. So if I happen to see something. A perception check at disadvantage. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> well, unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so you just see him kind of in a box, and then uh, you hear as he walks to the back of the cart, you hear the sound of wood slide against wood, and then you see the the cart kind of rock back and forth on its uh, on its wheels. And then you hear a piece of wood slide back um, against wood, and you hear the click of a, of a lock. Okay. And then you see him come back from around the wagon, smiling, and he says, Okay, all done. All right. Thank you for warning me. Anywho, I'm going to sit by the fire. I'm getting a little chilly. He says... Okay. And he says, uh, he, like, you see him, like, kind of, like, grab his coat and, like, get ready to take it off and then, like, shake his head and put it back on and, uh, kind of, like, cross his arms and look at the floor. Okay. So sitting down by the fire waiting <laughs> till <laughs> it's not my watch anymore. Okay. Um, so, uh, like an hour or two goes by and it's time for you to wake up whoever's second watches. Right, that's Caden. No. Like, oh. All right. Anything interesting happen? Um, he did something with the box, but I don't know what it was. Okay, so he messes with the box. Well, I guess that's more yep. information than we had. He look at he looked at the moon, the position of the moon, so <clears throat> it has to do with that, but I didn't see anything. Alright, and did you see Bilko do anything or is he still sleeping? I uh, did not take any note of Bilko. Alright, well get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. Thanks. <clears throat> Alright. And uh, All right. take note of Ralphie what's he doing? He's just kinda of sitting on the box. And, oh, and as you get ready to go to, to bed, Ayla, he says, Good night, Ayla. Good night, Ralphie. <laughs> and he kind of giggles and looks back down. Oh, God, I'm kind of chummy, huh? Yeah, and I did, nice. and, and I, oh, okay, sorry, I, he wasn't talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she's nice. Uh, do I see Bilko? Uh, yep, he's okay. still leaned against a rock with the hat tilted over his head. And in fact, every once in a while, you hear like a soft kind of like snore. And the flask in his hand is kind of like uh, still in his hand, kind of like leaking liquor onto the forest floor. Fair enough. Well, yeah, well how's the watch going? It's going okay. 
Anything interesting happen? Nope. Just like normal. Just, just a long night. Gotcha. And uh, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Yeah. Okay. It's on brain. Um, <laughs> for <our> sick. <laughs> Never been great at those. All you see is that uh, now that there's a sheet, you see that there's a um, a black tarp over the um, over the box, and you can see that the top of the sheet appears to be slightly like uh, reflective. Oh, what's with the bow? Oh, that. What's with the sheet? Oh, uh, it just in case it rains, keep it dry. Mm. All right, I guess fair enough. Does it look like it's even gonna rain at all? <laughs> uh, you could see like two or three clouds in the sky, but no, it looks like there's no chance of rain. Mm. Oh, and uh, just for both of you, uh, you notice that it is a um. So, the moon is almost full, uh, but it's like a um, three-quarter moon, a little bit more than a three-quarter moon. So that that's a waxing gibbous. That word that she just said. Okay. I'm teaching this to my students right now, that's what I know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Anyways... Okay. Well, it's a beautiful night. Well, hopefully, it stays that way. He's like, "Yep," and he goes back to toss his dagger into the dirt. Yeah, well, I'll I'll leave him to it, and I'll start drawing my arcane symbols in the dirt. Okay. But periodically, uh, I'll like uh, no, I'll, I'll tell Valentine to like pretty much do my watch for me and get me if anything happens. <laughs> okay. Um. So, about an hour and a half passes, and I need you to roll a perception check with your owl. So, your owl, you hear him, like, hoo, 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 which is like a, a warning cry that, um, he has, that you guys have established. Okay. Um, what are you gonna do? Um, I'll, I'll stop my drawing and I'll snap into his vision. Okay, and you see, kind of like, in the into the forest, like maybe, I don't know, like sixty feet away. Um, you see that there's this figure standing, kind of like half out from a tree, half kind of like blocked from the tree, and he's wearing he's about six foot four. He's got a steel helm on. And the helm has these kind of wings on the sides that kind of stick up, kind of in a, a like a like folded backwards kind of like wings. Um, the face mask completely covers his face, and it only has like these two. It's kind of like a sugar loaf helm with wings on it, mm -hmm. and you only see the two slits for the eyes. And um, you see that the the two slits of the eyes um, appear like. There's a, a very faint kind of like glow, almost like moonlight is shining through the the helm. Okay. Um, he's got plate mail armor on, and uh, it has like um, like wings and feathers, kind of uh, uh, not embroidered, but like uh, what's the word when you like carved into the metal so that it's like this extravagant plate mail armor, and uh. It, too, appears like it's glowing from the moonlight. And he's wearing plate greaves. Uh, and all of this is, like, bright, shining silver. And it's, like, the segmented greaves and plate boots. And he has, uh, like, this shining kind of silver sword strapped to his hip. And he has this cape on. You know how, like, in plate mail armor, there's the this thing that kind of attaches to the shoulders to hold up like a cape or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that it like stretches out and will actually like kind of like billow behind the knight, but not get in front of his sword. He, he's wearing that and it appears to be made out of moonlight and kind of like flowing out behind him. 
And as you're looking at the at this figure, its eyes turn towards your um, towards your bird, uh-huh. and he steps back behind the tree and disappears. And I'll, <clears throat> I'm assuming. Okay, uh, what's his name? Ralphie. Yes. Ralphie, someone's in the tree line. He I said, saw Mr. Valentine. His head pops up and he says, "What? Where?" Uh, and he know. starts looking around. Hold on. He was wearing plate mail armor, and he had a glowing moonlight cape. Um, so we should feel like we should be cautious. He saw Valentine and stepped back into the woods. And you see him, uh, as you say that, he kind of looks out into the woods and like, so roll a perception check. Me? Yes. With my, my character? Are you back in your, your own self or are you still yes. in the so bird? so I can interact because yes. the bird is higher up. Then uh, just with your own self. Yep, that's right. Okay. That's why I'm um, the bird. <laughs> you see, like, so... You think you see something happen to his face, but, like, it happens so fast that you're pretty sure it was your fucking imagination. And, like, in your mind, you think you saw something, but, like, you could not tell if it was real or not. Um, and he looks out into the, um, into the woods and mouths something and stands up, checks his dagger, and says, I'll be right back. And gets ready to rush out into the woods. Are you going to do anything? Um, I'm going to run over and... Iris, Ayla, wake up. Is that how you wake up? No, it's like keep on getting Don't in wake here. Me up. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was dreaming. I woke up. Oh, okay. What? As you, Someone was as, in the woods. And Ralphie ran after them. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm up. Okay, uh, Ralphie just rushes out to the woods, and you can catch sight from him for a second. Roll another perception check. Who? Uh, yep. Caden. I rolled an eight. Okay, you don't... He just goes out into the woods, <laughs> and, like, you wake them up, and then you look to where you thought he was, and he's gone. Oh, yeah. Like, you have no idea where he went. Should we go, or should we wake up Bilko? Um, I think we should wake him up. Alright. Bilko! <laughs> wake up! What? 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 Ralphie what? just ran into the woods after a man in armor. Oh. Alright, he'll handle it. What? Puts his hat back down. Puts his head back to go back to sleep. You're just going to leave him to it? Let's go. Yeah, I'm he's fine. Start fine, running we're up. going to leave you to it. Right. And he says, whatever you guys do. Goes back to sleep. What are you um, doing? You guys... huh? Are you saying you're not doing it? No, no, no. I said, I said, I'll leave you to it. Like su- su- suggesting that we're just gonna leave him alone now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you guys rush out into the woods? I was yeah. there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Are you uh, are you awake as well? Yes, Iris is awake. Are you... She uh, stretches a little bit and gets ready to go with them. Oh. uh... She checks in with Crackles. Does Crackles know what the fuck's going on? Or is um, Crackles like... So... 100 meters? So... Uh, I'll say Crackles I, probably goes like 100 out, 200 out, 100 in. Yeah, so, so I feel like when this all happened, Crackles was on the other side. Like, okay. he's going around in a circle around the, the camp. And Crackles was on the other side, but as soon as the action took place, Crackles went running to the other side and roll a perception check. Are you going to look through his eyes or just have him warn you? Uh, through the eyes real quick. Okay. Roll a perception check. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, I don't know how to make a perception check with this. <laughs> Attributes, maybe? Um, should be... So it's a weasel, right? It's a bat right now. Oh, it's a bat. Okay, so... Copy bat. Character sheet. Um, so, it is a wisdom set check, so just click wisdom. 13. 
13. So he sees um, something leap from behind one tree, and you see it kind of like fly through the through the air, and it appears to be a. So it appears to be about five feet long, um, and it looks kind of like vaguely the shape of like a squirrel or a rat or a um or like a rodent of some sort and it appears to be like leaping from tree to tree uh in the darkness but you just vaguely see a shadow there's uh ours is gonna direct in the relative direction and come back to from where she was there's something in that relative direction that's large and moving away. Alright, let's head that way. Seems like an animal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys rush into the into the forest, or are you guys going cautiously? Nah, I'm rushing. He already went running ahead. Any caution is to the wind at this point. Okay, so as you guys go Ooh. rushing into I'm the... I'm going to cast into... false life on myself, just in case. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to cast shield of faith. Okay. Okay, this is going to recast his false life. You know, All, right. All right, so... Oh. That's it. You guys go rushing into the forest, and uh, you guys are searching around for a little while, but it is, like, confusing as the the moonlight filtering through the canopy is leaving all these, like, kind of uh, luminescent kind of, like, shafts through the forest. But then there's all these trees kind of spread out, so it looks like there's just shapes everywhere. <sighs> so as you guys go into the forest, I need you all to roll survival checks. All right. But we're together? Mm-hmm. Right. For now. Ooh. So as you guys kind of rush into the forest, you guys are looking around, and all of a sudden you notice, Iris and Ayla, that you two are together, but Caden, you're gone. And Caden is by himself. You notice that you're by yourself looking around, and you don't see Ayla and Iris anymore. All right. Oh, right. And as you notice this, you see as this large shape leaps from one tree to another tree and goes rushing off into the into the forest more. And it looks like this five foot tall shadow. Kind of like I was describing before, kind of like a rodent or a squirrel or something. Five foot tall shadow that's a rodent or a squirrel. That's the shape of the shadow. Okay. Iris, did you see that? Yes, I believe I did. What? It's kind of gross. In the. I didn't know that there was. I did hear of a land that had rodents of unusual size, but I didn't think it was actually real. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. The princess and the bride. No, the oh, princess okay. bride. And as the, the they're as they're saying this, roll um a perception check. Who? Um, Caden. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh... No, yeah. You don't hear anything. Um, but all of a sudden, like you're kind of looking around, like what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, you see um, as uh Ralphie steps out from behind a tree. And um, as he kind of sees you, he looks at you, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, I can't find anything. Yeah. Did you see anything? No, you didn't find him? No. Nothing out here. Actually, don't leave me. I'm not really good in the woods. I, was, mm. I came out with Ayla and Iris, and they, uh, I got separated already. And as you say that, like, um, like almost like out of control... He, like, sticks his head up in the air and goes... <laughs> and he, like, shakes his head. And then he's like, wait, what? What was that? Um, Ayla's out in the woods, too? Yes. And he, like, gets shocked and he, he's... <laughs> this way. And he right. turns and starts walking through the forest. All right, I'll follow him. <laughs> okay. And he starts walking quickly. Like, looking back at you every couple of, of feet. Good man. <laughs> and to make sure that you're with him. <laughs> and what do you and uh, Iris do, Ayla? 
Um, I mean, we're just like the the creature. I want to kind of go to it because you know all I know is that they saw something out in the woods, and you know. Okay, so you're gonna try to follow the the creature. Yeah. Okay. So you guys start to follow the creature further into the woods, and you start to hear as you guys are tromping through the forest, you hear a, a twig snap behind you. What do you turn guys around. do? And as you turn around, you see as something starts to step out from behind the tree. What do I see? What is it? Um, and as you kind of like take a closer look, you see as the shape of uh, Ralphie kind of appears and he like looks at you and he like puts his head up in the air. <laughs> Here they are. I found them. Oh, thank so God. that, so that's where the creature went. Uh, you are not sure. Like you guys w ran out there, you didn't see anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, since we don't know where he's at, maybe we should go back because we did just leave the whole thing unguarded except for. That yes, yeah, that, yep. Yeah, okay, good, good idea. Let's go. I guess. It'd been one okay. thing if we found someone, but. We didn't. And so he says, yeah, you're right. Let's get back. And he starts heading in a direction. And uh, he, before he goes, he says, Ayla, stay close. Mm. And starts walking into the, the forest towards the opposite direction you guys were heading. Okay. Same. I'm going to follow. And, and uh, Ayla, you, because you've interacted the most with him, like... You've noticed that usually has a super shy kind of demeanor. Uh, that seems to be gone right now. Okay, like he's taking care. He knows what he's doing. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck this water sound. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have this app to help remind me to drink water. I'm not installing it because it keeps jump scaring me. Because <laughs> it's just a water pouring noise. Oh, just... oh my god! <laughs> I don't know what's so funny, but this is a little creepy moment that's happening in the game, and then you totally jump scare yourself. It's fucking amazing. Anyway, so he leads you guys back to the um, back to the camp, and as you guys kind of burst back into the clearing of the road, um. You kind of look around, and you see that uh, Bilko is still totally passed out, like, snoring softly. And uh, everything appears to be normal from where you guys can see. But you guys could just see, like, you guys come back out right, right here. So you can just kind of imagine what you guys can see from there. Okay. Um, what are you guys going to do? Um... I mean, I imagine we'll first check the camp, make sure it's undisturbed and it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Ralphie, you should take the box. First thing you, he Ralphie does is he heads over to the back of the um, back of the uh, the box, and you just hear like uh, this soft shit. No, no, uh -oh. no, no. What's happened, Ralphie? Uh, he pricks his head around. Um, I can't tell you. And he puts his head back around the, the back of the thing. Oh, fuck. It's something to do with the box, guys. I Be wary. On guard. Are you guys going to go over and check it out or stay on this side of the wagon? I'm, I'm going looking around. Like, I don't, I'll at this point, this obviously, if he's upset, if he's said shit, you know, like, that means it's not there. So as you guys go around the back of the, the wagon. I'm, I mean, I'm not. I'm still, like, keeping what? Keeping eye. Okay, so, Caden, as you go around the back of the wagon, you see that there's this tarp on the back, and the part that kind of hangs down over the door has been slit, like, uh, by a sword, and been pulled, like, ripped open, and you see what appears to be, um, like, claw marks in the wood, like somebody had tried to, um, like jab, like, clawed hands into it, and, like, rip the door off. Shit. But the door has held, and so there's these, just these two claw marks in it, and um, the lock appears to have all kinds of, like, scratches and things on it, like somebody was trying to rip it off. Uh, 
whatever was in the box isn't there now. And I'm going to snap into Valentine. So the the door was not open. The door is still closed. Oh, it looked like they weren't able to open the oh. open the door. Okay. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I was confused. Clearly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, is it still in there? Whatever's in there. Neat. Uh, he just kind of looks at you, and like before even thinking, he just says, "Moon Paladin." What? Uh, he says, "What?" Did you say Moon Pellet? Moon Paladin. Oh, Moon said. Paladin. Or I think I'm going to call them Lunar Paladins because that sounds way cooler than Moon Paladin. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, you're saying a Lunar Paladin did this? And he looks around and he says. Well, with what you told me you saw, and this, seems likely. But they were unsuccessful. Looks that way. Good. I guess, and, why did they leave? Cause we and as, as he says that, you see him lift his head up in the air and... <sighs> I think they're gone. That's strange. Are they dragonkin? Is that what a moon paladin is from? Uh, he looks at you, and he kind of like roll a another perception check. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, I you just you. cannot see anything. Wow. That's part of his character. He knows. Uh, <laughs> he just looks at you, and like his eyes kind of narrow for a second, and he says. Exactly. Alright. I'm going to stay up the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> he says, so am I. And he goes and he grabs a box and he carries it and he doesn't put it like right next to the edge but he carries it like over here and he puts it on the ground and he's sitting on it just kind of like staring at the back of the box. Um, two things. Well, I'll go over and I'm like, someone, I guess, he says it's a lunar paladin, tried to break in. There's all sorts of damage. I'm going to go look at it if you want to join me. The, okay. the box? Yeah, the mystery box. It's not open. Ralphie says they failed to get in. Well, that means, that means we haven't failed our mission then. Well, yeah, hopefully. Not yet. Uh, um, so you said it was like sword marks or claw so, marks? So imagine if there was like gauntleted hands mm -hmm. and like the tips of the gauntlets were um, like metal spikes. Mm. It appears like somebody had driven their metal spikes into it, like five fingers basically, mm -hmm. and tried to wrench it off, wrench the door off. Oh, okay. But they were unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. And then the lock looks like somebody with clawed hands was like scraping at the lock trying to pry it off. Well, Ralphie, I think you should explain to us what moon paladins are. Uh, or lunar paladins, I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> he looks at you and he says, they're the, um, they're the Dragon King's elite guard. And if they've found us, Let's just say it's not good. I know. Yeah. Shit. Uh, and we're going to Winthrop, which is right at their door. And he just kind of looks down and he's like, I don't understand how they found us. You were so careful. How did they find us? Uh, and then he notices that you're still standing there. And he like shakes his head and he's like, oh, it, it should be fine. Yeah, yeah, we, we're going to be okay. And, like, his whole demeanor goes back to, sure. to Ralphie. All right, so we're going to continue our mission as if nothing happened. He's like, don't worry about it. I, I'll keep watch. I'm good at it. Ayla said so. Fair enough. Uh, uh, I'm going to help you keep watch. Uh, but... That's fine, but now that he knows that we know that he's here, he'll probably go away. Yeah, Definitely won't come with reinforcements, though. It's kind of nice to know that they can't get a door open. 
Um, if you guys are certain, you could keep watch. I'm gonna go resume my slumber. Good night, Ada. Good night, Ada. It's probably night. your turn for watch, Iris. <laughs> I can't sleep anymore anyways. Not with this box. It feels like sleeping next to a lion. And as Ayla kind of walks over to go back to sleep, uh, Frankie looks at you and he's like, She's pretty, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys should go over there, though. I, I got this side. Don't even worry about it. He just kind of like looks at you and kind of like does a little head motion to like I got this. Hello. Oh, sorry. Alistair was talking to me at the same time. Oh. Like, I went to sleep, so my character's not responding. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Would you say? Uh, he told you like you guys could go over there and go watch. I I got this. Don't don't worry about it. Uh, just help him keep watch here. So. <laughs> right. Go. Iris is gonna go towards as far away from the box as she can. I'll try and keep an eye on everything. Okay. And he's sitting over over here, just so you guys are with. Okay. Yeah, no sleep. <laughs> okay. Um. So, are you saying where you can see him, or is he hidden from you? Uh. Nah, he's hidden. Okay. Uh, so, the rest of the night kind of... I guess, technically, he's not. I imagine at this point, um, ours is going to have crackles just float around in circles and mostly watch through his eyes anyways. Okay, roll me a perception check. Can I sit up abruptly and be like, you mean someone tried to break into the box and Bilko slept through the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. God you... damn it. I'm just gonna roll back over and fall back asleep. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go get Alistair some water. I'll be right back. Okay. Um. So this was a very low skill check because he thinks that he's um not being observed. Uh, but uh, you see through uh your squirrel's eyes as at one point um you see as Frankie kind of lifts his head. As a bat, sorry. He lifts his head up, and it almost looks like his his like nose and the front of his face kind of elongates. And you hear, and you just see him. <sighs> and then his nose, his face morphs back to normal, and he hangs his head down. Does Iris recognize what he is out of curiosity? Like, I, I could take an educated guess. I don't um, know if Iris will know here, or not. Though. Let's roll a DC 7 wisdom save to see if you know. Wisdom save. Wisdom check, I guess. Uh, Like, his totally his face appears to turn into the face of a rat. Ours is just going to muse to herself. That's interesting. And then continue having crackles do circles. Okay. I'm back. Uh, the rest of the night kind of passes uneventfully, except for uh, you see several times throughout the night he does that same thing where he lifts his head up and kind of sniffs the air and goes back to just kind of sitting there. But the rest of the night kind of passes um, uneventfully, and the sun peeks its head over the um, the trees. And as soon as the sun hits Milko's face, he what 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 what? <sighs> All right, and he kind of gets himself up. First thing he does is walk over to the uh, the wagon and fills up his flask, takes a large gulp. And walks over to the, the wagon and hops on up. And he's like, everyone, get up. Have have I seen where his alcohol is? Um, I think at this point, yeah, because you kind of saw where he was when he was uh 
really upset about what Ayla did. Oh. <laughs> Noted. And uh, do you guys all wake up? I mean, I guess. Uh, says the guy. Anyway, to get my stuff together. <laughs> yep. Heck oh, and Lord. as you guys are all getting up for, and ready for the day, you see as uh, Frankie kind of walks up next to the wagon and like steps up and starts whispering in uh, Bilko's ear. And uh, Bilko kind of looks back and he's like, God damn it. Okay. And uh, they take the um, the tarp kind of off the off the top of the wagon and Bilko kind of looks at it and shakes his head and they fold it up, put it back in its little hidden compartment. They latch the side of the wagon down so that it's completely hidden and you it's kind of like a seamless um, thing. So like the door is right where um, the cracks of the wagon would be. And uh, they both uh, go to the back of the wagon and they paint over um, the claw marks in the back of the, of the wagon so that it doesn't look like uh, someone tried to claw into it. And he climbs back up into the driver's seat and says, So... Ready to get going? Hmm. Yes, I suppose. Excellent. Off we go. And he cracks the reins, and you guys head off for the 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 morning on your on your way. Um. So it's up to you guys. Do you guys want to keep going? It's ten seventeen. I'm more than willing to keep going if you guys want to. Just figured, since this would be a stopping point, if you wanted to stop, we could stop here. Um, I mean, I would say we'd stop here, because we don't want to get too far without uh, without Heather. Fair enough. And also, you know, it is 10.17, and I'm tired. But mostly, <laughs> okay. but this, this, ex this reason is literally for Heather. Okay. Understood. Um, since this isn't exactly a hard process... Would Iris know anything about the Moon Knights? Lunar the Knights? Lunar Knights? Um, roll a wisdom at advantage. Because you would definitely have heard of them. You've heard of them, for sure. Uh, what track? Uh, a history. So, you don't know a ton about them. You do know that they um, are known to be the... Uh, the Dragon King's kind of, like, elite uh, paladins. Um, imagine Soma, if Soma had stayed in the military instead of going off on an adventure. Uh, and at the, towards the end of his career, th that he would have become, like, a probably a lunar paladin. Um, they are known to wear, like, this plate mail armor that glows at night and uh they are known to be like loyal to the death to uh to the dragon king but uh, of this iris would know this or not but do they work kind of outside the normal chain Does she absolutely know that? yes they're like imagine like secret service kind of uh, usually work alone or in pairs, um, but they're, they're not like an actual unit. They're like the, the king's kind of like private elite troops. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions you guys wanted to ask? No, no I don't. So now so, there's two days left till we get there. Correct. Oh, until shit hits the fan. How in tune uh, with like moon phases are you, Caden? Or Iris? Not, not my guy. Okay. What about you, Iris? Would that be something that you would pay attention to? Like he's probably thinking, unless it's the same exact way in the Feywild, which I imagine not. 
It is absolutely. That's why I'm not even asking Ayla. Like she hasn't yeah. been here long <laughs> enough no, no, for I mean, that. Like no way. For Kaden <laughs> too, though. I mean, he spent 50 years in the Feywild. Yes, then not used yeah. To the cycles. Absolutely not. Um, if it doesn't have to do with survival, probably not. Uh, it might have to do with survival. You would probably know when like a full moon was, because that's when you could see the best at night. In like. Then, yes. Okay. Um. So you would know. Uh, go ahead and just roll a survival check. At advantage. Yeah, Thank you me. would know that there will be a full moon um, the night that you guys are supposed to arrive at the um, the gates. Fantastic. I'm not worried. You shouldn't be. Yeah, I don't no anything. need to worry. <laughs> no need to worry at all. So... My character didn't see the rat or the monster, the road giant monster, right? Because uh, I got separated. They correct. Saw it. Yes. He's totally where rat though. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting in the or walking next to the cart, thinking, oh, I don't know if I should have told the others. <laughs> 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 So are you guys, is the mystery building, or are you guys... Oh, yeah, I like this. Yeah. This is really good. Okay. I can't wait to fucking... Oh, man. I wish we could play so much longer. No, this right. is fun. I like the little stuff that, like, pays... Like, I like, even though it's, like, a hint, like, a little hint. Like, you were just, like, uh, he was cleaning his nails, and he's, like, nibbling on it like a rat. I was, like, I didn't think of anything of it, but it helps add to it when I... You would describe stuff later. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Exactly. Knowing your DM style, I feel like you decided this person was a wear rat like halfway through. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like mm -hmm. the big, yeah. He wasn't a wear rat last episode, but he is this episode. But it doesn't matter because we didn't know anything about him. So. I'm going to flat out tell you that is a hundred percent correct. <laughs> <laughs> he became a wear rat before the session, but, but yeah, yes, we in between. just met him, so it didn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But good, yeah. good call because you're like, oh, this character is present now, so you can you know build on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I might introduce a character and then get good ideas for them later, which is fine. Well, especially the way I had described him. Like with the mouth open and the like, <laughs> the looking mousy and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like By all means, I'm happy with this turn of events. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Ayla, Ayla's really annoyed because she just tries to not make friends and not care about people, so she can just focus on the only people she cares about. So it's a character flaw of hers to just be flippant towards people, and now she's really annoyed that this rat mouse, mouse guy got got into her now, and now she's like, I'm gonna care if he gets hurt. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> oh, and for sure. over with. He is super smitten with you right now. <laughs> like, so 